This is the story of Zootopia's first ever police bunny, Judy Hopps, and her unlikely ally, Nick Wilde. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Let's begin now. Judy Hopps was excited. She had graduated at the top of her class from the police academy. Now she was leaving her family's farm and going to the bustling city of Zootopia. She was going to be the city's first ever bunny cop. No one believed a bunny could make a good cop, but Judy was determined to prove them wrong. As Judy made her way to her apartment, she looked around. Zootopia was filled with animals of all shapes and sizes. She couldn't wait to begin her new life. The next morning, Judy introduced herself to her fellow officers at the Zootopia Police Department. Hey, Officer Hops. You ready to make the world a better place? Soon, Chief Bogo walked in. We have 14 missing mammal cases. 14 cases. And that's more than we've ever had. This is priority number one. Chief Bogo assigned each officer a missing mammal case. Then he came to Judy. And finally, our first bunny, Officer Hops. Parking duty. Judy was disappointed. But if she had to be a meter maid, she'd be the best one possible. Judy was writing parking tickets when she saw a fox entering Jumbo's cafe. Suspicious, she followed him. But when she got inside, Judy saw that the fox was just trying to buy a Jumbo Pop for his son, who was dressed as an elephant. My boy, this goofy little stinker, he loves all things elephant, wants to be one when he grows up. Is that adorable? Who the heck am I to crush his little dreams, huh? When the owner refused to serve the fox, Judy stepped in and flashed her badge. If the little fox wanted a Jumbo Pop, she was going to make sure he got one. Grumbling, the shop owner handed over a Jumbo Pop. But when the father fox reached for his wallet, he realized he didn't have it. Judy offered to pay. Oh no, my treat. It's just, you know, it burns me up to see folks with such backward attitudes toward foxes. Outside, Judy introduced herself to the fox, whose name was Nick. Then she turned to his son. And you little guy, you want to be an elephant when you grow up? You be an elephant, because this is Utopia. Anyone can be anything. Later, Judy saw Nick and his son on the sidewalk. It turned out Nick's son was not a child at all. He was an adult fox. The pair had fooled Judy to get a free Jumbo Pop. Now, they were melting down the Jumbo Pop and refreezing it into smaller Popsicles, which they were selling to Lemmings. Judy couldn't believe it. Judy caught up to Nick. I stood up for you, and you lied to me. Nick shrugged. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. All right, look. Everyone comes to Zootopia thinking they can be anything they want. Well, you can't. You can only be what you are. Nick pointed to himself. Sly Fox. And then Judy. Dumb bunny. That hurt Judy's feelings. I am not a dumb bunny. Right. And that's not wet cement. Judy looked down. She had hopped into some drying cement. Nick shook his head. You'll never be a real cop. The next day, a pig ran up to Judy. His flower shop had just been robbed by a weasel. Judy chased the bandit all around little Rodentia before finally catching him. But when Judy brought the thief to ZPD, 
Chief Boga was angry. The chase had caused a lot of damage. Judy was confused. Sir, I got the bad guy. That's my job. Your job is putting tickets on parked cars. Suddenly, Judy and Chief Bogo were interrupted by a very upset Mrs. Otterton. Her husband had been missing for 10 days. Judy knew this was her chance. She offered to find Mr. Otterton. Before Chief Bogo could argue, Deputy Mayor Bellwether appeared. She had heard that Judy was taking the case. She was thrilled. Chief Bogo had no choice. I will give you 48 hours. But you strike out, you resign. Judy gulped. Oh, uh, okay, deal. Judy's only clue in the case was a photo of Mr. Otterton. In it, he was eating a popsicle. That meant Nick knew him. Judy went to find the sly fox. She tricked him into admitting that he had committed a crime and made him agree to help her. Judy and Nick soon found out that Mr. Otterton had been seen getting into a car with the license plate 29THD03. The pair went to the DMV, where Nick's friend Flash the Sloth worked. Judy approached Flash. Well, I was hoping you could run a plate for us. Flash agreed. But the sloth moved so slowly that it took him all day to get Judy the answer. Nick had known talking to Flash would stall Judy. He was trying to get her to give up. But the bunny wasn't about to drop the case. Finally, Nick and Judy learned that Mr. Otterton had been driven away in the back of a limo. The duo tracked the limo to a parking lot. When they looked inside, they were shocked. The back seat was ripped to shreds. The two went to find the driver, a jaguar named Mr. Monches. When Monches opened his door, the pair saw that he was badly bruised. He told them that Mr. Otterton had attacked him. Whoa. Uh... Teensy Otter did that? Mr. Monches explained that Mr. Otterton had been mumbling about night howlers before he went savage. Suddenly, Mr. Monches dropped to all fours. Without warning, he lunged at Judy and Nick. He had gone savage too. Nick and Judy tried to capture Mr. Monches. But he had escaped. When they explained to Chief Bogo what had happened, he demanded Judy's badge. Before Judy could agree, Nick stepped forward. Here's the thing, Chief. You gave her the 48 hours, so technically we still have... 10 left to find our Mr. Otterton. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So, if you'll excuse us, we have a very big lead to follow and a case to crack. Judy was surprised to see Nick stand up for her. She realized that there was more to the fox than she had first thought. Maybe the two weren't so different after all. Then Nick had an idea. They could use the traffic cameras to see where the savage Mr. Monches had gone. Nick and Judy visited Deputy Mayor Bellwether. The two watched on her cameras as a group of wolves hopped out of a van and grabbed Mr. Monches. As one of the wolves howled, Judy realized something. Night howlers! That's what Monches was afraid of! Wolves! The wolves are the night howlers! If they took Monches... I bet they took Otterton too. Nick studied the screen. It didn't take him long to figure out where the wolves were going. The Cliffside Asylum. Judy was impressed. Well, look at you, Junior Detective. You know, 
I think you'd actually make a pretty good cop. When the pair reached the asylum, they found the entrance guarded by wolves. Judy howled. Soon, all the wolves were howling too. With the wolves distracted, Judy and Nick snuck inside, where they found rows of cages with imprisoned predators, including Mr. Otterton. Judy counted the cages. 11, 12, 13, 14. Chief Bogo handed out 14 missing mammal files. All the missing mammals are right here. Suddenly, Nick and Judy heard footsteps. The pair hid. A moment later, they heard a voice. It was the mayor. He knew all about the savage animals and was keeping it a secret. Taking out her phone, Judy recorded the mayor. Then her phone began to ring. She and Nick had to get out of the asylum before they were caught. narrowly escaped. Back at ZPD, Judy presented her recording to Chief Bogo. Impressed, he let her arrest the mayor. A short time later, the newly appointed Mayor Bellwether held a press conference. When Judy was asked to speak, she presented the facts about the animals who had gone savage. All we know is that they are all members of the predator family. Thousands of years ago, predators survived through their aggressive hunting instincts. For whatever reason, they seem to be reverting back to their primitive savage ways. Nick was hurt by her words. Did she think he could turn into a savage predator? Turning his back on Judy, Nick stormed off. The press conference divided Zootopia. Soon it was prey versus predator. Judy felt so bad about the chaos she had caused that she quit the ZPD and moved home. A few days later, she overheard her father scolding some kids for running through the flowers at the edge of his field. When Judy heard her father's friend Gideon refer to the same flowers as night howlers, she realized something. Night howlers aren't wolves. They're flowers. Judy's father explained that the flowers kept the bugs away from his crops. But they could also make animals go crazy. Judy remembered from her case file that Mr. Otterton was a florist. The flowers are making the predators go savage. That's it! That's what I've been missing! Judy jumped in her family's blueberry truck and drove back to the city. She found Nick and apologized to him. I was ignorant and irresponsible and small-minded. I have to fix this. But I can't do it without you. Nick knew Judy was sincere. He forgave her. Judy told Nick what she had learned about the flowers. Together, they followed their clues to a secret lab in an abandoned subway car. Inside, a group of rams were turning night howlers into poison pellets they could shoot at predators to make them go savage. Judy knew what they had to do. We need to get this evidence to the ZPD. Nick and Judy took control of the subway car. But the rams tried to stop them. After almost colliding with another train, their train derailed and caught on fire, destroying the flowers. Nick held up a case with a gun and a night howler pellet inside. They still had their evidence. The pair raced through the Natural History Museum on their way to ZPD. Suddenly, Mayor Bellwether appeared. Judy explained what they had learned, but Bellwether already knew. She was the one making the predators turn savage.
Bellwether thought it was time for Prey to be in charge. The only way for that to happen was to make them fear the Predators. As Nick and Judy dashed for the exit, the Rams knocked the case out of Nick's hands. Bellwether pulled out the gun and shot Nick with the poison pellet. Nick dropped to all fours and lunged at Judy. He had turned savage. <coughs> Judy backed up. So that's it. Prey fears Predator and you stay in power? Bellwether smirked. Fear always works. And I'll dart every Predator in Zootopia to keep it that way. Just then, Nick stood up. He hadn't gone savage after all. He had swapped the flower pellet in the gun with a blueberry from Judy's truck to trick Bellwether into confessing. Bellwether wasn't worried. It's my word against yours. But Judy had recorded the confession. As the ZPD arrested Bellwether, Nick and Judy smiled at her. It's called a hustle, sweetheart. Boom. Soon, Zootopia returned to normal. Nick became a cop and Judy's new partner. Judy even gave the commencement speech at Nick's Police Academy graduation. She reminded the new officers that change started with them. They could show the animals of Zootopia how to build a better world. Judy smiled at Nick proudly. Thanks to the two of them, the residents of Zootopia had learned that, working together, they could all make their home a better place.